And then I just heard the And then I started uh, bolting. Today, I head to one of Southern California's hidden most gems, just south of Bakersfield. Since it was only a two hour drive from Los Angeles, I knew I had to check it out. Tucked away in the Los Padres Mountains, Windwolves Preserve is a private conservation park open to the public. When you arrive, they ask you to sign a guest book. They also ask for a small donation, which is very fair, because you're treated with amazing views and a free shuttle that runs all through the park. I parked my car in the lot right next to the gate. You're really not allowed to go any further, so this is where all the cars are. I checked my map and decided to go down the San Amiguito Trail. My end goal was to make it to a reflection pond about five or six miles away from the parking lot. In the distance, I could see a trail that led to a viewing area of all the elk within the park. The park itself has around 200 elk, which roam freely. I continued down the trail that I was following to a place called Raven's Landing. Now, as a Game of Thrones enthusiast, I was a little excited to see what this view might have to offer. So I'm out here at Wind Wolves Preserve, which is just south of Bakersfield. One of the things that really attracted me to this place was just how open and grassy everything is, you know? Usually I'm used to the desert or in some mountain regions, but this is just straight grass. Kind of looks like Iceland, honestly. Along the trail, I noticed there was some grape soda lupine, which gives off the fragrance of grape soda if you smell it. Since it was a flowering park, ladybugs definitely were abundant. Eventually, I made it to the top of Raven's Landing. And although there were no wildlings in the distance, I did see a crow flutter up above. It seemed like part of the trail was covered in a fluffy white snow, when in fact it was just the cottonwood starting to bloom this time of year. The landscape changed all around me, and I was surrounded by broadleaf trees. I crossed a creek and I felt like I was back in Ohio. Shade surrounded me and I felt cool, refreshed, and ready to hike a hundred more miles. But as I continued, the tree line broke and I was back in the grasslands again. Apparently there are elk, uh, up to 200 elk out here. There are bears, mountain lions, bobcats. It's gotta be a mountain lion though. I really wanna see a mountain lion. To me, I don't think there's anything cooler than seeing a mountain lion, but I think we have to get a little bit deeper in before we can see that sort of thing. Windwolves Preserve is known for its abundance in wildlife. So it's not without reason that you couldn't expect to see some type of animal there. But in addition to big animals, there is definitely a plethora of small insects as well, like these monarch butterflies. I did this hike in late spring, and because of that, much of the wildflowers had already died off by then. But the green grass had turned into this majestic shade of gold, which seemed to cover the entire landscape. That's the sound of a crow. It's really cool. It's like this clicking noise. Something like that. If you think you're getting too big of a head and you really just need to be humbled, I really suggest going to this place. You're hiking through this amazing valley with walls surrounding you on either side. It really puts things in perspective by showing you how small you are in the grand scheme of things. It's a really humbling, humbling experience. So I haven't recorded for a while because I set down my tripod to get this cool shot, and when I came back, my entire tripod was covered in these bugs I call earwigs. There were about 20 of them or so, and ah! Oh, they were all over my 
tripod and I didn't realize it, so I put my tripod on my back and I started feeling all these crawls and you know, those little buggers are this big. I don't know if I've seen the last of them, but I'm ready to burn everything in my backpack to make sure it is. All right, where am I? Oh, I'm at a campground. I'm at the Willows Picnic Area Campground. Those must be the Willows. As an Ohio University alum, I really appreciated that trailhead. But as I continued, I seemed to get an ominous side from a gateway in front of me. There was a rustling in the bushes, and I really wanted to see what it was. I hear something. It could be a deer. Whatever it is, it's getting through some thick brush. Hello? That was a rattlesnake. Well, that was a rattlesnake. I thought I heard something over there. I went a little closer, uh, and then I just heard this, and then I started uh, bolting. <laughs> well, uh, I guess that's why they say keep to the trail. I'm gonna be a little jumpy from now on. Also gonna look to take a different way back. Uh, they weren't kidding though, there's, there's definitely a lot of animals here. I began hearing some baas in the distance and I looked to see these white specks and these green hills. As I got closer, I realized that they were sheep. I came to a crossroad and decided that I wanted to go up to the ridge to see what I could see. It became pretty apparent that I had missed the wet season for the reflection pond. But the sign said that there was a Native American site in the distance, so I decided to check it out. I like people, but I also like to be, you know, alone and away from it all. You know, I just moved to LA, and living in LA is much different than living in a place like Ohio. LA is just a sprawling city. And to me, it's kind of amazing that there are all this, you can have, up, you can have so many millions of people living close together, but then you have spaces like this where there aren't people for miles. I feel like if I was stuck in such a clustered city, clustered place, I'd have to be out here every weekend. I'm surprised that I'm the only one out this far. I think the move to California has definitely been an interesting part of my life. I was lucky enough to get a job out here in a field that I want to be working in. But as great as that is, I left a lot of friends behind. Andrew, Robbie, Brian are you know, some of my best friends, but there's a whole lot more too. 
I'm also lucky enough to have some friends out here too. So, I've never really gone hiking alone like this until I moved out here. Part of it's relaxing, another part of it's lonely. All right, I think it's time to call it quits, more or less. Head back, probably take a different way. See more scenery. That sort of thing. I took my time hiking down the hill. I really wanted to take in as much as I could. Despite its name, there are no wolves in Wind Wolves Preserve. It gets its name from when the wind brushes against the leaves and the grass and makes it seem as if wolves are running through it. It's not really something you can capture on camera. You kind of have to be there to see it for yourself. I found my way back to the main road and decided to take the short way back. Along the way, I was greeted by a happy hummingbird looking for nectar in the flowers, as well as some amazing cliff sides. Despite having bugs crawl down my back and almost stepping on a rattlesnake, this was probably one of my favorite hikes I've done in Southern California. Finishing the hike left me very satisfied, but as I began to drive back, I began to get excited because I knew this was the same road that I would be taking in a few months to go to Yosemite to see Andrew, Robbie, and Brian. It's about time they come to Southern California, and I'm glad that I can finally show them what this land has to offer.